G'day and welcome back to my channel. Now, have I got a surprise for you? Well, it was a big surprise for me, I can tell you. Last month, I got sent this fantastic Core XY 3D printer from Two Trees. It's called an SK1. And uh, it's 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 mighty, I must say. It took me a while to get the thing bedded in and get the settings right and everything. It was all sort of really software problems and Harry problems. But once I got it going, I mean, I printed things like this, Terrafish. Now, I'm not going to print vases and crap like that. Any things I print are to do with modelling, because it's a scale modelling channel. Or they're practical things, like I printed a dunny holder. <laughs> my dunny paper holder broke. Uh, that's a toilet roll. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I printed minions. And I used organic settings, right? Because organics, the supports. You see, you're going to have supports when you do 3D. That is a really clean minion. And that's filament, right? It's not a resin, like the one I did for David previously. So that is a filament print and it is so smooth and it printed so quickly that is the thing that's the party piece for this printer it is smooth it is fast well once you get it all dialed in so you know i made other things little tape holders for my tapes um of course there is the inevitable benchy so i'll show you a time lapse of that and a whole lot of other things because i mean i even printed a cat flap for bass yeah. yes mask that's right because she broke her other one. So I designed a better one. It has been a journey. It has been so much fun. So I hope that sounds interesting. Hang around. There's going to be a whole lot more. I'll go into detail about setting up the printer and using it. And I'll tell you about a few things that don't quite work on it. But that's okay. It's mostly good news. Roll the music. Well, as I said, this arrived about a month ago, but I didn't get a chance to look at it. I mean, you know, December is just super busy, as most people are, especially with advertising and marketing like I am and doing graphics things. So we were super busy, and it wasn't until really <laughs> the week before Christmas that I started to have any time to myself, and it's only been the last two weeks I've played with it. But look, it arrived with this grabby box, and then when you got the box out, it was really nicely packed in all this foam, beautifully packed. And you pull all that out and there are lots of other boxes inside, all kinds of things. And one of them opens up, it's got all the tools, right? Lots of little tools and widgets and things and all kinds of stuff. Why get in detail, you just, you know, the stuff, you get stuff. It's quite comprehensive. Now, once you get the foam all out of it, the first thing you've got to do is address, there's locks everywhere, right? There's just these little locks. And they look like this, right? And you just unscrew them. They supply a tool in there. I'm just using my own snazzy little hex tool that I happen to have. So they come off, that's not a problem. And then the next thing, uh, you've got to screw on the antenna, put the USB thing in, power, set your buddy uh, voltage. It's all explained. Now you could use these instructions that come with it, right? But, um, well, look, maybe they're okay in the Oriental versions, but in the English versions, they are dreadful. You know, the word assembly is spelled about three or four different ways, and none of them are right. It is absolutely dreadful. And the pictures are so sort of tiny, and you can't really see what's going on. So I'm not going to use that. I didn't. I gave up. But you don't have to worry about that, because Two Trees have got some fantastic little videos on their website that show you exactly what to do to prepare it. I said, take out the locks, set everything up, make sure you've got all the switches flicked, all the rest of it, and then get on to setting up the software that's in it and leveling things. Now, it's very, very easy. I was up and going in about 20 minutes. It really wasn't that hard. I had the bench you printed within half an hour. So once you've got all that out of the way, now you can start actually sort of printing stuff. Now, they supply a little benchy boat, right, in the um, USB. So we print that out first because it's the first thing. It's easy easiest thing to do and it prints mightily right it's it's out so fast here's sort of a time lapse now i'll show you but basically it just sort of rip snorters along it took the 18 minutes although it will go through some pre-setup every time because it will go through that triangular leveling every time and if you don't check it in the g-code it'll go through the setting up of the donk 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 all the um the, the mesh points which is not a bad idea which means you don't have to do much i mean you've only really got to set the um the z height apart from that it does everything else sort of automatically it's quite smart make sure that all your z-axes are greased one of mine wasn't but it's probably because they just rushed it out to make this pre-production one but once you do that it really is quite simple now getting back to the installation as we jumped ahead a little bit there but anyhow the um screen comes in its own little box and it's got a little clip on thing it's a bit fiddly to put on but you get there and then it screws on the top and ideally you wouldn't have the power on doing that you do it before the power's on harry well, i get the power on now the spool holder 
is supposed to go down the bottom here, which is not a real good spot. But anyhow, they provide all the nuts and beats and, and you've got the little uh, hex driver and everything. They give all that, but I didn't like it there at all. And there's a reason for that. Uh, up here, you could connect it. But look, my temperatures in here, right? 76 humidity, 25 degrees. And that's a cool day. It's been 30 degrees and 99% humidity. So I've got this dryer. Look at that, 44%. That solved the whole problem. Once you've got all the bits screwed on, I say watch those videos, they'll really help you. Then you can start playing around the touch screen. And as you can see here, I can adjust the temperature. I can home the um, head there, the print head. I can do all those things. I can do a lot of control from that screen. It's quite good. It's quite a good little screen. Now, once you have got that sort of set up, what you want to do is go to calibrate. It's one of the first things you want to do. You push this little button on the left, see there's four buttons, start with the one on the left. It's going to heat up the bed, and then it's going to do a triangular sort of leveling. Okay, so it does this all the time. It does this before every print. Is it will automatically level the bed for you. You don't have to twiddle knobs underneath your bed. It does it for you. It's all automatic. It's very good. So it goes around, finds all the points, and it levels everything out. Once it's done that, it'll return you to back to the screen, and then you go to this one. This is going to set the Z offset, right, or the Z height. And this is the only time you're going to have to do some fiddling. And you've only got to do it once when you start using the printer. You get a bit of paper. That's the old paper trick. You slide the paper under the nozzle there. And you keep lowering the nozzle using controls. You've got various settings, 0 0.2, 0 0.02, 0 0.02. Right? And you keep lowering the nozzle until the paper sticks. And then you make it just a little bit higher. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm messing around with those until I can get the paper to sit nice and firmly. Okay, so here's the side view of it. So the paper's sticking there, so adjust it a bit more. Yep, it's a bit better. Adjust it a bit more so it's not tearing. That's looking good. Just a little bit less, and yep, that comes out, and it slides in. That is perfect. So now we can save those calibrations. All right, so we have our bed level. We've got our Z height set. Now we're going to move on to a thing called the mesh, all right? Now this is a very clever thing in that even though you've got a level bed, you can often have failures because certain points of the bed can be wonky. This de-wonkifies everything in the software. What's happening here is, if you have a look, there's little dots are all lighting up along the bottom here. That's because that little print head is checking every single one of them to a micromillimeter amount to see if there's any undulations. And it's making a map, or what they call a mesh, a bed mesh. So it works its way all the way through, checks everything. Here it is, this is how it does it. Right. It does six by six, so there's 36 points that it checks until it is sure that basically it's found all the troughs and all the hills and the tiny ones, like you'll never see them. So it's really done a fabulous job. Once that's done, it'll start saving it off, and there you go, all done. Now, the last thing we have to do, and these are things we're only ever going to do once, you know, unless we have the printer. This is a, oh, I forget what they call it. It's, it's sort of a wobble check thing. Well, they call it here, sharper calibrate. What it does is, it checks for undulations and, and the vibrations and everything, and then tries to work out which of those are going to affect the print. So instead of it, when it's moving quickly, that it actually then prints a wobbly line, this calculates how much wobble there is when it's moving at certain vibrations, and then it'll compensate for that wobble when it's printing. So there you go, it was wobbling there, and it doesn't even wobble more, because it checks, it says it's calibrating X, and then it calibrates Y, and finally it's going to calibrate the set axis as well. There you go, it's a pretty amazing sort of thing that it'll have all that software built into it to stop you getting wobbly prints. And when it's finished, it just saves itself. How good is that? Now, the only real problems that I had were really software-driven issues. The thing is, it comes with a version of Cura, and I'd already been using Cura on my Elegoo Nipchin. So I thought, oh, great, I know Cura. That's okay, that'll be easy. So in I install Cura, but the Elegoo... Neptune has its own, and it's an older version of Cura, which is specific. It's actually a, a version, an Elegoo version. So when you put in the version for, um, which is just standard Cura, for, for the, uh, the 
two trees machine. Those two versions conflict each other and nothing works. And I got both printers just stopped working. It's just an absolute, I go, what's going on here, you know? And even when I did try and get them to print something, absolute disasters. And the reason is the config files of the Neptune and then the new instructions of the Neptune and then the instructions that are in there, the config file for the two trees, SK1, they all conflict with each other and the whole thing was a bloody mess. So I went back to basics. I completely scrubbed everything, re-leveled, did all this, checked all everything, you know, that make sure there wasn't anything mechanically wrong, make sure all my filament was fine. What I did was, I used their Prusa slicer, right? Now I hadn't used Prusa before, so it's a bit of a learning curve, it's a little bit different. Then I got the hang of it, and I really loved it. It is really nice and easy to use. Okay, see some pics here. So yeah, Prusa slicer was just so, and the best thing with Prusa slicer is you can have configuration for the SK-1 and other printers. So I've got both my Neptune and my SK-1, both running off Prusa, Right, both slicing and pressure and slicing beautifully, uh, especially their organic slicing. And then everything's going out to the individual printers and I'm using this because there's Clipper software built into this thing. I'm using that Clipper software to be able to remotely pick up my iPad, dial in the IP address. I can sit in the lounge having a cup of tea and a pizza or eating one of my curries and I can control my printers. I can have, you know, if I had a webcam, I'll be able to see what's going on too. There is a webcam coming for the SK-1. I nearly went out and bought a uh, you know, aftermarket sort of webcam. You can pick one up from my local store here and hook that in. I might put that into the Neptune actually. But the Two Trees SK-1, it's got a webcam coming and then that'll be built into the system. So then if you use your software, your Clipper software, you can watch your print. So again, you can be out in the lounge, you know, sucking down a bloody pizza and eating your curry and having your cup of tea. And you can check if anything's going horribly wrong. But the beauty of the whole remote thing is I can be in the air-conditioned hobby room. I can slice my files, get them all organized. I can preheat the machine. It does take a little while for that bed to heat up. And then I can send everything across. Then I can basically casually walk in there because I know it has its little bit of a setup routine. Check the first layer goes down. Everything's good. And quite frankly, once I'd solved the whole Cura Prusa problem and... I'd also moved the printer from, I just had it on a standard sort of little table that I use for modeling. It was wobbling on that, right? And you saw the machine, how it goes through its whole sort of cycle of checking all that vibration, right? Well, it was vibrating the pop out of itself. So you need a sturdy table to put on this thing, zips around and carries on like a pork chop. Now that zipping is a thing because, listen to this. So yeah, I can hear, even from the lounge with the door closed, I can hear those dolphin sounds. Like, whip, 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 whip. Well, sound, I can't do a dolphin sound, but it sounds like a dolphin, right? I can hear those sounds when I'm in the lounge and through closed doors and, you know, the air conditioner on. The um, Elego, well, I can't hear it print. It's really quiet printing, but it has the most loud and obnoxious fan that you've ever heard. So yes, yeah, so I can tell when the Elego switches off because it's big fans. They stop. So, oh, the Elego's finished, but I can't hear the Elego printing. But I can hear the Two Trees SK-1. I can hear it printing, making all the dolphin noises, right? And um, as soon as the dolphin noises finish, boom. But its fan's really quiet. So I don't know, if I had that fan on the <laughs> Elego, that'd be a perfect sort of printer. Or if the, they somehow they can make the stepper motors not as noisy, because I know Bamboo Labs and others have worked out ways to decrease the noise of those stepper motors, right? Which are making it zip in back and forth. So that's about sort of the only thing. So really, the only beefs were that um, I didn't grease one of my axes, but I mean, that's just something to check. Check your nuts are all tight, right? Always a good thing to do, girls. And grease your shaft. Yep, that's what she said. <laughs> that drying machine, right? A little e-sun will dry that is absolutely necessary in me. We've been having thunderstorms and, you know, tropical heat and humidity up to 90% here. So I still continue to print with, you know, the PLA filament because I could dry it as it was printing. And so even though the room might be at 90% humidity and 30 degrees Celsius, no problem, just printing away quite happily. So, um, yeah, if you uh, if you were in a similar situation to me where it's the tropics and you get humidity, think about getting yourself a little dry machine. They're not expensive. They are worth every cent. I need my glasses for these. Yeah, checking the prices, the Two Trees is listed on their website 
for five fifty nine, and that's US dollars. Right? We'll do everything in US dollars. It's too tricky. Um, you'll obviously pay postage with that, so you know it's going to be a bit more. But I think I saw the price down even in Australia down to probably around the seven hundred dollar mark. But comparing, say, probably one of its main rivals would be the Bamboo Labs P one P, right? Which is also an open enclosure, and uh, they've dropped from six ninety nine down to five ninety nine at the moment, really cheap. So they're almost line ball in price. There's only a few dollars in it. But if you get your little coupon, you could get your, uh, your SK one even cheaper. Okay. And the thing is with um, the SK one, well, you're not going to be worried as much about being locked in to a system and have to use a particular, um, you know, like we can with Bamboo, you've got to use their slicer and their system and all the rest of it and their apps. You don't, right? With two trees, I'm using Clipper. I'm just using a basically it on my iPad, do whatever I like, you know. I don't have to use Clipper. I could use probably other slices. It's a lot more flexible. It's like what we expect in the community, okay? Now, an interesting one would be the Creality K1. Now, that was listed at 599 US dollars. They just dropped their price, according to here, looking at the American website, to 449 right? So nearly $450. So they've undercut, and you're getting the enclosure with that. Okay, if you want the enclosure with the Bamboo Labs one, all right, which is just $50 more than the SK1, but if you want enclosure, they're asking a lot more money, like it's another $150, almost $200 if you want the thing fully enclosed. Now, you need the enclosure, really, which Two Trees are going to have out shortly, but they call it a shell, okay, they call it a shell. I haven't got a price on that, but they're going to have that out shortly. They're also going to have the, um, the camera. Right, the webcam, so you better do all that. But the two trees is good, it's reliable, it's flexible, you can do whatever you like, you can lock it in, you can muck around with the settings, you can probably get it on Orca Slicer, you can do it on um, Cura, but you don't want to have another one on the network running a different version of Cura. That's what I had. If it's your only printer, you could run it on Cura, it probably run all day, not a problem at all. So look, my conclusion, it's good. I don't have a Bamboo Labs printer, I don't have the Creality K1, or I don't own them. I'd like to. You can send them to me for comparison, guys. <laughs> but look, going from my Elego, which I really liked, it's a bead slinger, and then jumping to the Core XY, so much better, so much smoother, so much faster, you know, just better all around. So the experience for me has been good. I find this a good printer. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to use it. I'm going to buy the shell and the webcam, right? I'm happy to shell out the money for the shell. So there. Yeah. And I can do that. <laughs> so that's my endorsement. I've liked it so much, I'll pay for the accessories and I'll keep using it because it's allowed me to print out the things that I need, like all my rat harps that are going out and everything. They've all printed beautifully. They've printed quickly. I've been able to schedule all the prints, get everything done. I've had few failures except when I was fighting between the slices. Once I got that set up and once I got on a stable sort of surface, no problems at all. Just put the file in, hit print, I could just about ignore it. I mean, I'd go and check because I'm still a bit paranoid, but everything's printing beautifully. So look, if you can just get one of these things that it's set up and it goes, and that's all you want, right? Which is all I want. I, I don't mind about tinkering. I don't want to waste all my time with that. I've got, you know, jobs to get out that are things that are going to make me money. So I need to get those things done. So I need to be able to just know I can slice it quickly, put it in, put it out there. I can just keep an eye on it, maybe the first layer, it's fine, which means at least the filament's nice and dry, but then a dryer helps with that. And then away it goes, and I'll just come back when it's finished, okay? And that's what I want, and that's what you want. This thing does the job. It's quite good. So thank you to Two Trees for sending it to me. They didn't pay me any money, so all of these thoughts are mine, okay? The opinions are mine. I'm not being coerced at all, although... Reality. I wouldn't mind one of your K1s. And Bamboo Labs, you can send me anything you like, even when you're one of those new A1s. <laughs> yes, 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 I'm becoming a 3D printer slut. <laughs> Oops. All right, on that note, because I'll probably get demonetized, buttons, as always, there's buttons. You've got to save them now. There's a like button, there's a comment button, and there's a subscribe button. Apparently, that makes them all flash up. Because when things are flashing, oh, yes, all those Gen X people go, oh, look, buttons, got to push them. Yes. Very exciting. So Basque is very happy with their cat flap. My customers are all very happy with their harps. I'm very happy using the printer. Look, it's a good printer. Check the prices though, because everyone else seems to be dropping their pants at the moment. But honestly, once we get the discount codes, I think this one is going to be a real bargain. And it does the job. And it does the job well. Goodbye from Australia. It's Huru from Harry and Andy.